Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about what a website actually is, all of the elements that you need in order to have a website and where the associated costs are for those. So how much a website could cost you as well. This is helpful if you're just starting out to, to thinking about producing a website because there are some elements you might want to get before you even think about employing somebody. But it's also helpful if you're going to make your own website because then you know what to get. Or if you have a website and you're thinking about maybe changing some things, you'll actually understand where the where costs can come in. So let's get started. So what makes a website? How much does it actually cost to make a website? How much do those components cost that you need in order to have a website? There are three components that you must have that you can't avoid. You need a domain name which is in this example yoursite.com or ones that you might be more familiar with from being around here is fluidwebworks.co.uk or everything for redheads and you can buy a few of those. Hosting, which is where your website is actually located and you'll understand a bit more of that as we go along. And your website files. Traditionally these would have been HTML files or PHP but nowadays you have things like content management systems like WordPress and Joomla uh, which means that you can manage those files yourself and then the hosting is where those files are kept. So if we just talk about the associated costs with those components to begin with we've got the domain name. The cost of the domain name depends largely on if it's a .com or .co.uk or whatever your local domain name is, so it might be .au for Australia, .ca for Canada, .us for, for America. It also is a, it's a recurring annual fee, but the more that you buy, the more of a discount you get, or for the longer. So if you buy .co.uk, .com, .net, .org, all of those, and you probably get a discount overall. But also if you buy for one year or for two years for four years you, you'll get a bulk discount with that as well and it can often be a good idea to buy everything up so that you've sort of reserved that domain name for yourself i've for everything for edits i've got dot biz dot every every country dot com dot us dot net dot org all of it because then nobody else is going to buy that domain name and use it instead of me or, or pretend to be everything for redheads it is worth buying more than one just to reserve them, as I've just said, and it's usually less than £15 per year. So obviously, if you're in a different currency, then have a look at that. We're talking under $20, really. Um, some of them you have to buy for two years or more, some you can buy for a year or, or whatever else. But have a look at what's available. It depends on where you're buying it from. So that's that. Hosting, this is, like we said, where the files are actually located, and it depends on how much space you need for your website files how fast you need it to be, how many people might be coming to your website and you know what kind of load there might be on that. And added features such as an SSL certificate which helps if you are doing purchases on your site, if you've got an e-commerce website, whether you want for privacy which means nobody knows who's bought that domain name and email, although email is often included. Little things like that can matter as well. This can be as little as £30 per annum for a decent hosting but what you really put, need to decide first is what kind of website you want and then that helps you to decide and this can vary largely depending on who you go to anyway uh, but that's what I found is that £30 per annum you're looking at maybe $40 a year then then that will that will be enough for you and it is again it's another recurring cost so it's something that on a year by year basis or you can again buy it for more than one year at a discount now, the website files is where the real cost can come in, but it also is an opportunity for huge savings. So, so far, we've got a grand total of £50, probably, depending on how many domain names you buy and what kind of web hosting you've got. But realistically, that there is sort of a cap on that, and you know those that's where your cost is. The problem with files is that you can create the website files by hiring a designer to create them, or you can do it yourself. If you hire a designer then depending upon the website package that you've got with them, it could cost anything. Like, as an example, a P&O website cost them well over a million pounds. But then you've got, if you say, look, I just want a website for this much money, this is what I've got, then you, you'll get a basic one or you get, might get a, a more advanced one or, or whatever. So that's where the actual cost comes in, is in creating the files, but you do have an opportunity to control that. You can also do it yourself. I think I've already mentioned content management systems like WordPress, Joomla, whatever else. And it, that means that you can actually manage the website largely yourself, which is, is where you can make massive savings. If you are interested in doing it yourself, then you can always have a look at some of the other posts we've got, which actually explain a bit more 
how that's possible. I'm not going to go into it now because we've kind of covered it in other posts, but it is possible without you needing loads of expensive software and, and loads of technical experience. It's absolutely possible. So how do you get started? I would say the only thing, and you might understand from what we've spoken about so far, you can get the domain name now just to reserve it, and this won't cost you a massive investment. It's worth just doing it, even if it's just the beginnings of a business idea, so that you know that that you've reserved it and nobody else can use it. The hosting can be decided upon once you've actually decided other factors, like how big you want the website to be, what you want to be able to do with it in future. And... It can be organised by a designer if you decide to hire one in the future. If you do hire a designer, then really they should be able to either advise you on hosting or to manage it for you. Other things you can do is look at the other posts that tell you how to start a website and how to choose a domain name, which are related. There'll be links below anyway. Or if you're on YouTube, then there are other videos that you can go to. And these will actually help you to, to look at some other aspects. Bit of an overlap with some of the ideas that we've talked about. But anyway, so... That is, those are all the components that you need in order to produce a website, and those are the associated costs. And, and also, you can understand, I think, where there's fixed costs that you can actually have some control over, but also where it can go a bit out of control. So that's it from me for this week, and I hope to see you next week. Thank you.